The trial of William Samoy Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang before the International Criminal Court continued from 24th to 25th June 2014 with the testimony of the 20th prosecution witness who testified under the pseudonym P0405. The witness testified under the protective measures of a pseudonym, facial pixelation and voice distortion. Parts of the testimony were given in private sessions close to the public to preserve the confidentiality of the witness's identity. Witness P0405 testified that in 2006 he attended something that he described as a ceremony to make William Ruto a Kalenjin elder. He identified some video clips played by the trial lawyer Lorenzo Pugliati as recordings of this event. Now, witness, can you just tell the court where that is in the video? That is a Lorent Sports Club. And the gentleman arriving in the Jeep? William Ruto. He further said that before the 2007 elections, relations between the Kikuyus and Kalenjins in the area of Yamombi were generally good. However, on 26th December 2007, he saw roadblocks and demonstrations of ODM supporters, mostly Kalenjins, Luos, and Luyas, who claimed that the PNU was rigging the elections by making arrangements to staff ballot papers marked in favor of Mr. Kibaki. I asked you a moment ago how the atmosphere was and you'd said it was tense. So did you stay in Eldoret or did you go home? I would just went home. As you were leaving Eldoret, did you notice anything? Or did you observe anything unusual? Yes, as I was leaving home, the route that I had taken to go and join another route that goes to my home, there were some other demonstrations, not really demonstrations, but people gathered around uh, a business that used to, to, to is a storage for milk storage um, facility that belonged to the Kenyatta family, that is what I get to understand, I got to understand. And uh, the people gathered around there were planning to put it on fire, alleging that uh, some of the stuffed ballot papers marked in favor of the Kibaki had been stored there. That is the reason why they wanted to burn that facility. The facility is called Brookside. While on the road, on 1st January 2008, the witness said he saw many Kikuyus and Luyas from his home place fleeing towards the direction of the police station. Can you tell the court what you saw? I saw very many people also moving. And at one point uh, on the road, I, wit I happened to see people moving toward the direction. Uh, which is uh, location number 15, close to location number 15. And when I moved closer, I saw some two human heads that had been chopped off from the main body. Were you able to tell what ethnicity these heads and bodies were? The people who were around there were talking and say, saying, uh, Lua. When they said that the decapitated heads belonged to Lua's, was there any theory as to why um, the two Luas would have been decapitated? Yes. What was that theory? That uh, the Luas were the ones who were responsible for breaking into businesses belonging to Kikuyus and uh, looting and so it was a revenge, or uh, that's what I would put, it. that's how I understood, it was a retaliation. Retaliation 
meted out by who? I did not understand who did that. Thank you. Answering questions from the legal representative of victims for this case, Mr. Wilfred Derito, the witness confirmed that on the 31st December 2007 and 1st January 2008, he was running away in fear from one location to another. The witness also confirmed that he lived in his location, location one, for 20 years and had experienced some form of violence like the 2008 post-election violence in 1992 and in 1997. And this violence was between Kikuyus and Kalenjins, the witness added. While answering questions from David Hooper, defense counsel for Mr. Ruto, regarding a ceremony which took place on 3rd June 2006 to make William Ruto a Kalenjin elder, the witness couldn't confirm the defense counsel's assertion that the ceremony was more of a political event than a cultural event. And this event uh, which you attended at the sports club and of which we've seen a video and of which we have a transcript, um, would you agree that it was very much a political event rather than a cultural event. Would you agree with that? I wouldn't entirely agree with that. Now, as far as Kalenjin, the word Kalenjin is, is concerned, um, do you recognize that it's a relatively recent name assigned to a group or grouping of Nilotic peoples, the Nandi, the Turgan, the Pogot, Kayo, I won't list them all, but various particular ethnic tribal groups to which the word Kalenjin has been more recently invoked uh, as an umbrella name. Are you aware of that? I am aware. Indeed, I just said it was the 4th of June. It's the 3rd of June, of course, the, uh, the uh, Eldred Sports Club event. Um, so let me correct um, what I just said about that. So you do agree with that. Now, each group, let's take the Nandi, for example. The, the Nandi have their own elders. Do you understand that to be correct? Yes. As do the Pogot or the Kayo. They have their own elders, their own tribal system. Is that correct? Yes. And to be made, as it were, a Kalenjin elder, would you agree is a bit of an artificial nomination? I wouldn't, because you're becoming the leader of the different sub ethnic groups within the Kalenjin that you have just mentioned. Are you aware that there was no um, Kalenjin <coughs> Council of Elders uh, until after 2008? Are you aware of that? I'm not aware. Regarding the violence after elections, the witness confirmed that he was aware that violence broke out throughout the country, but couldn't agree with the defense counsel on the nature of the violence. In this issue of the trial in context, the ICC registrar, Hermann von Hebel, talks about the protection of witnesses at the ICC. The court's ability to protect its witnesses is a cornerstone of the ICC's ability to fulfill its mandate. The adequate protection of witnesses plays a key role in the successful functioning of the court, aiming at ensuring that witnesses testify freely and truthfully without fear of retribution or suffering further harm. The statutory framework of the court makes it clear that the court has a duty to take appropriate measures to protect the safety, physical 
and psychological well-being, dignity and privacy of victims and witnesses. Witness protection is also fundamentally important for both the prosecution and the defence to present their cases in court.